Senior NATO official has said Britain and NATO allies need to be ready for war. Admiral Rob Bauer, who is a Dutch admiral and the chair of NATO's uh, military committee, its most senior military committee, which represent, which is uh, attended, I should say, by the chiefs of defence of all NATO member nations. Rob Bauer has issued this warning ahead of a meeting of the committee this week. Now, it's a message both about civilian resilience. He's talking about possible conscription and he's praised countries like Sweden, which have issued warnings to their citizenry already. And it's also a warning about resilience in terms of stockpiles and military materiel. His message is that in order to avoid war, we need to be ready for it. And of course, it comes against this backdrop, both of sort of what feels like record global instability or rather volatility with the conflicts in the Middle East, Israel fighting Hamas in Gaza, Iran and Pakistan trading missiles, America and the United Kingdom bombing Yemen as the Houthi rebels attack ships in the Red Sea, and Iran also bombing Syria and Iraq, Israel also attacking uh, Lebanon, just to name but a few uh, of the conflicts at the moment. NATO, meanwhile, about to embark on its largest ever, one of its largest ever exercises involving uh, tens of thousands of troops across NATO members in what is essentially a massive preparation for responding to a potential Russian attack. Now, Russia remains bogged down in Ukraine, its forces tied down in a largely frozen, bloody and bitter conflict. But nonetheless, concern from NATO, a warning from Admiral Rob Bauer, chair of the military committee, that Britain and allies must prepare for war. Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh Bahashim. Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Waha Wakakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, who will well teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the Servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada Camp. And pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as World War Three is on its way. World War Three is on its way. All right. And pretty much the reason why I titled this lesson as this is because NATO is going up against Russia. And this is in prophecy. This is prophecy. This is in the scriptures. And, you know, we're going to go into the, you know, the, the scriptures and bring this information out. And this is why we say, you know, if you are an Israelite, you are so-called Negro, Hispanic and Native American Indian. You need to repent and get right before the Lord comes. Because this is going into the second coming of the Lord. The Lord is coming back. And you don't have much time left. If you are on this sign, you are Israelite according to the scriptures. And you need to repent. Because World War Three is on its way. Which that is fulfilling prophecy. Because our Lord, before he could come back, these prophecies have to be fulfilled. So, let's read this. And I was looking at this. I was reading this. It says a NATO military chief has warned that Brits needs to prepare for an all out war with Russia. Right. And it says and be ready to join in battle. So there's a war that's coming. An all out war. This is leading into what? World War Three. Yes. World War Three is in the Bible. It says fear of the it says fears of a third war, a world war. See Fears of a third world war are mounting and military experts fear that Britain will have no choice but to put boots on the ground. It says Admiral Rob Braver, chair of the NATO military committee, warns this week that civilians need to be ready for a conflict that will change their lives. 
as the globe faces its most dangerous and volatile moment in history, large numbers of private citizens will need to be mobilized. During a crunch submit between NATO, difference chief in Brussels, Brewer said, we need to be rate radiar across the whole spectrum so this is leading into a world war three and a world war three could be coming soon we don't know when but it, this could be leading into world war three we don't know and i read some of the comments that's up here and um you know a couple of people had some good points um let's read this this is a dude named zozora one it says, isn't it a crying shame when the memories of World War II disappeared into the mist of time? The new generation has absolutely no idea of the complete horrors of war. History repeats itself time and time and again. And that's true because that's in the scriptures. There's nothing new under the sun, right? It says, same mistakes made millions of lives lose. It says, millions of lives lost because we don't learn from history. If World War Three kicks off, just remember you won't have to worry about the past or the future because life itself will come to an end. And life itself will come to an end, but that the end of the world is pretty much the end of Esau's rulership. The reason why World War Three is coming because it's fulfilling prophecy of the Lord, so his only begotten son can come back. So the Lord Yahweh Shai, he's gonna come back. So when World War Three takes place, that's gonna be the time for the Lord to come back. Now we don't know when the Lord comes back. But according to prophecy, World War Three has to has to pop off so the Lord can come back. So prophecies have to be fulfilled first so the Lord can come back. So the end of the world is going to be the end of Esau's rulership. That's leading. That's going into World War Three. We're in the end of age. It says concentrate on peace and to short out our differences because the alternative doesn't be bear thinking about it. Well, first of all, we don't have peace we're not in the time of peace you know jeremiah 30 and 5 through 7 mentions that we don't have we're not in the time of peace so there's not going to be peace you know there's not going to be peace and it says um there's another person i seen up here i don't think i'll be able to probably get him then but there's another guy on here he had a good point in what he said about uh let me see maybe i went maybe i went too high up so like, let me see him here he is right here don don 63 salakia don 63 said um if world war three breaks out people will witness for the first time how gruesome a real war is he said heaven help us so he has a point because world war three is going to be a devastating thing and world war three is going to take place here in america and also across the other places it's going to be civil unrest, a whole lot of things in that time. It's going to be a lot of things going on in that time. And that time is going to be horrifying in any moment ever in this lifetime. So let's get to the scriptures because I'm rambling long enough. And uh, we're going to start in uh, Jeremiah 50 and 3 because this is prophecy. All right. You got the NATO getting ready to have Britain go in to a war, you know, uh, with Russia. And this is a prophecy. Jeremiah 50 and 3. It says, For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her. And what is the country that cometh out from the north? Russia, right? Russia is coming up against the NATO. And the NATO is getting Britain to join to help participate in this full-out war that's coming. It says, it says all-out war with Russia is looming Britain citizen uh, civilians need to be ready to mobilize NATO official warrants. See, so NATO is getting into it with Russia, and that's prophecy, right? This is leading into that. Jeremiah fifty and three: For out of the north there cometh up a nation unto her. That's talking about Russia, right? And it says, which shall make her land desolate, because Russia is going to fire off those missiles. Yes, nuclear missiles, right? Nuclear missiles are in the Bible. They are in the scriptures. And it says, and none shall dwell therein. None shall dwell therein. It says, they shall remove, they shall depart both man and beast. Talking about its allies. 
Russia and his allies, America and his allies. America's allies are going to be go is going to betray America. All the countries are going to go into a full out war. This is leading into that. We are headed into those times and we're going to prove that Jeremiah 50 and 3 is talking about Russia. This is this is Ezekiel 39 and 1. It says, "Therefore thou son of man, prophesy against Gog." All right? That word Gog is a Hebrew word which means Gog, which means mountain. And that word mountain is it can mean a ruler, right? Or it can mean an actual mountain. So that word Gog, it means mountain, right? And it says, "Thus saith the Lord, behold, I am against O Gog, right? The chief right prince of Meshach and Tubal and where is Meshach and Tubal located in Turkey that's where Meshach and Tubal is located that word chief means Ra'ah right Ra'ash right and then you have prince which means Nashaya'ah Nashaya'ah which means prince Ra'ash means chief so it's chief prince that's how you say it right and that's what that's going into right that Gawag that Gog means Gawag in the Hebrew which means mountain Verse 2, and that mountain could be talking about an actual mountain or someone in charge, a ruler. Verse 2, it says, I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, right? Because Russia, and this this is a future prophecy, Russia is going to be put, the Lord is going to have the military put into, into six, divided into six parts. You're going to have one part protecting the homeland, and then you're going to have the rest of the five parts of the military of Russia going out to the land of Jehoshaphat. That's where the war is going to take place. That's where the major war is going to take place. Yes, World War Three. It's going to take place, right? And it says, and and will cause thee to come up from the north parts. That's Russia, right? And will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So this is what is going to take place. This is a future prophecy. Yes, World War Three is in the Bible. World War One, World War Two, World War Three is all mentioned in the scriptures. This is Revelations nine and twelve. One woe is past. What is what is the one woe talking about? World War One. World War One is in the Bible. When you read in uh, the beginning of Revelations uh, nine, actually you can start at re the end near the probably near the end of Revelation eight and read all the way down into into uh, Revelations nine, the ninth chapter. It goes in the mentions of World War One. Right. It goes into the bottomless pit, which the bottomless pit is talking about Europe. That's in. Uh, uh, Revelations 9 and 1 It talks about the bottomless pit Which is Europe All right, World War 1 did take place It's in the scriptures So that, that one woe that is past That's World War 1 It says and behold there come two woes more after And that those two other woes Is World War 2 and World War 3 Right So it's that's what it's talking about World War 1, World War 2, World War 3 is in the Bible Revelations 11 and 14, it says the second world is passed, which was World War II. World War II passed. You have World War I that took place, and you have World War II that took place. All right? It says, and behold, the third world cometh quickly. What is this talking about? World War Three. World War Three is in the Bible, and it is going to come to pass. It's prophecy. All right? And this is leading into the World War. World War Three is coming, regardless if you believe it or not. This is why we're trying to... Prepare ourselves for the second coming of our Lord and getting ourselves right. You should be doing that. Second Edris 16 and 13. It says, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. Talking about a nuclear missiles, right? His arrows, the missiles that he shooteth are sharp, right? Because Russia has the strongest, just giving an example. Russia has the, the strongest weaponry. Everybody think America does? No, Russia has way more Way more weaponry, more powerful weaponry than America. They have the they have the Satan one, Satan two, right? Those missiles shoot at six to seven hundred miles per hour. You cannot stop an ICBM nuclear missile, an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's in the scriptures. So when it says his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, that's talking about the nuclear missiles, because the Lord is setting this up, right? And shoot. It says, and shall not miss. Those missiles ain't going to miss. They're going to hit those areas, those targets. Wherever the Lord predestinated for the missiles to hit, they're going to hit them areas, and they're not going to miss. It says, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, and this is what is going to take place. World War Three is going to take place, which is going to lead into those thermonuclear destructions, right? And this is the judgment of the Lord. The Lord is casting his judgment on the earth. Let's read this. It says, what will happen if if World War Three started? 
And I just wanted to read this because this is really pretty much edifying here. It says, with modern advancements in warfare and technology, the results of a full-blown world war could bear catastrophic results for humanity, right? It says, we could see unparalleled levels of suffering, right? The displacement of millions severe food insecurity and disruption to essential services you see that it's going to affect people people are going to be put to death that's going to be judgment of the lord but you're going to have the elect that's going to be delivered before the missiles hit but i just got an example of that if world war three was to take place this is why you need to know the name of the lord this is why you need to be following the correct the the true gospel the correct doctrine learning and following the true man of the lord who are the elders and apostles of Great Millstone? Because when this prophecy comes, you're going to be asked out if you've been misled following individuals that are not teaching the correct doctrine. Because the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, they're preparing us. You know, the Lord set these men up to prepare us for the days that are to come. The end days. The end of age. Right? Joel 3 and 9. It says, proclaim ye these among the Gentiles, right? It says, prepare war, right? Wake up the mighty men, right? Because our people right now, they're in a Gentile state of mind. You know, our people, they're still embedded in the world. But the more prophecies we're bringing out is waking up those mighty men, which are the Israelites. They're waking up to the truth. So the more prophecies we bring out, the more of the truth that we're getting out, the more that we're waking up the mighty men. It says, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Verse 10, it says, beat your plowshares into swords and your prony hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, because that's America. You know, going into Daniel 7 and 8, right? It mentions them bragging about their military might when they're not really nothing. Russia has a way more stronger weaponry. They have way more stronger weaponry, nuclear weaponry than America. And people can argue with me all you want to. America is not great. America is fucking weak. You know, they got, I want to say a lot more stuff. These foreign countries have all strong men in their military. Strong men in their military. What does America got? They got, they got, they got a weak military. They're weak. You know, you got a lot of, whole lot of feminism going on in, in, in America's military. They're weak. And these foreign countries see how weak America has become. They're no match, right? Verse 11, it says, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. It says, Thither cause thy, might, thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Verse 12. Let the heathen be weakened, right? And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about, right? Because the Lord is going to sit, the Lord is going to judge the derision from the Middle East. That's what's going to take place. The Lord is going to stretch his hand off from the Middle East. The Lord is going to have that war take place from the Middle East. Right? And that's where that's going to take place. That that third war. That nuclear war, man. So, wait. Hey, things are going to get very hard for... If this really occurs, it's going to get very hard for people. Especially when this comes, because this is letting you know now, the Lord is on his way back. World War Three is coming, and it is on his way. So, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kakwadash. Double honors to Yahweh and Apostle Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Camp Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. So, hey, you need to repent and get right before it's too late. There's a lot of things that's taking place right now. And a lot of you individuals that don't know, now you know. Repent before it's too late. Shalom.